Have you watched recently? Have you watched what high school talent looks like? Have you seen this? Um, so one of the beauties of current social media is that once you establish that you are a lacrosse enthusiast, it just starts showing up on your feed, which the social dilemma. I very, very much appreciate that at least. So yeah, I get these like recruiting videos. I get these kids. I took a team back East, back to Long Island a few years ago and played this team called team 91. And mm. Team 91, I think, is now in its prime because all those little kids are now, like, juniors and seniors, and they are just ripping it up in the camp circuit right now. I think it's Coach Spolina's son, Coach Petromala's kid. I don't know if they're on the same team. I saw some video where they were playing on the same team. Um, mm. It was pretty nuts. I mean, these kids are freaking yeah. good. So, so that's what I'm, I'm so interested in. The other day, uh, and like you said, once you've established that you like lacrosse, all of a sudden all this stuff pops up on your YouTube feed, on your Instagram. Same so, with dogs um, too, though. So That's yeah. true. Uh, I, I guess really same with anything. So an, another lesson here is everyone be careful on what you click on. All right? Yeah. yeah be careful. Because the one you time you're on. curious about, you know, S&M, then you're, you're in there. You're people don't forget. There. People don't forget. They don't. They don't. One click. That's all it takes. <laughs> so I'm scrolling through my YouTube the other day, and you know it's mostly like DIY stuff, mm. uh, and lacrosse, basketball, um, the occasional acoustic music video that I might. Okay. Yeah, I, I might play some acoustic music in my classroom. Keep things okay. chill. Keep yeah, things yeah. relatable. Um, I love a good acoustic cover. I know you do too. Uh, but I, I came across a, a video that, you know, I might not click on it all the time, but I clicked on it and it was some sort of uh, club game. And I think it was Sweet Lax uh, mm. and Team 91. Sister? Yes, Sweet Lax and Team 91. Now, I, I want to say this was about a year ago. I, th I think it was like... A, maybe 2021s were playing, something like that. And the level was amazing. I, 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 and you know my feelings on club. And I do think there are a lot of pros about the club scene right now. I think there's a lot of people doing it right. Uh, I think that they're developing talent, they're exposing talent. Um, there's certainly something to be said about a club team and what they can put on the field and what that does for kids uh, that age and making them stretch their boundaries of what they are as players, right? Especially so they're, if they're not they're, coming from a strong high school team. A hundred percent. What was interesting about the Sweet Lax team was uh, they had kids from Rochester and Florida. And uh, obviously that Tampa. seems kind of... There's a Rochester-Tampa connection there. Right. So what what the announcers had explained was uh, some of the folks in the Sweet Lax club uh, hierarchy moved down to Florida mm. and started a, a a chapter down there. So then they just combined their team for tournament circuits. Sweeter and Lax, I think it's called. Sweet. I think it's sweetener, like Sweet. like equal, <laughs> or. Uh, <laughs> It might, I don't know. It might be. I don't know. Stay for the puns, people. Stay for the puns. <laughs> they come for the lacrosse. They stay for the puns. <laughs> um, well, you know what's interesting, level... though, about Sweet Lax? I'm Tell not going to toot our horns, but I am going to toot our horns, is that, you know, we have a hand in Sweet Lax's success. I'm not following you on this. So, for listeners out there, Jordan and I went, attended Nazareth College. We played lacrosse there. And Nazareth is in Rochester, New York, and at Nazareth every summer while we were in school was the biggest camp around, right? 400 kids at Nazareth lacrosse camp. And there was a program that was particularly present and it's located in Victor, New York. Victor, mm. New York, it's yes. just outside of Rochester, right on the throughway. In Victor, New York, as we were working Nazareth lacrosse camp, we'd see these youth kids come in and they just had numbers upon numbers upon numbers. 
And we were like, these kids are going to be good someday. And they were, I mean, they were six years old, seven years old, eight years old to 10. And all of a sudden, in the last five years, they started winning state championships. They're beating Ward Mevel. They're, you know, one of the best teams in the country. And a lot of those kids are playing for Sweet Lex. And we coached them when we were in college. So you're welcome, Sweet okay. Lex. Yeah, I did not put that together. Yeah. Um, shout out Flea City. I'm sure a lot of those kids were in, in the flea group, which I, uh, I was an instrumental part of, the, the youngest crew in the Nazareth lacrosse camp. Um, shout out Reardon, Coach. Reardon, T.D. Yeah. Erlin. Like, these are names people know. Came through yeah, camp. you're right. You're right. And shout out, shout out Coach Randall for making me do that, even though I didn't want to. So thank you, Coach, <laughs> for that. Uh, even though I requested to get out of Flea City four years in a row, and he said no every single time. So yeah. thank you coach you're the best um so at any rate the, these two teams watching them play i don't know that instagram those short little 30 second clips by the way hate tiktok love reels mm, i love why? reels why why do i why do i love what's reels the what's the difference um i don't know i'm old and i don't want to download another app I think that's probably the biggest difference. <laughs> it's probably it. That's right? real talk. Uh, that's real talk. That's real talk. I mean, I don't know what. And, and Shawnee, Shawnee will tell you, I hate TikTok. I think it's ridiculous. I think it, it but at the same time, it will, you don't need to. And I wouldn't have gone on it unless Shawnee put me onto it. And I told him from the jump, it's not for me. Do I get why kids like it? Yes. Does it ruin 90% of my classes at this point? Yes. Because kids are in class doing TikToks, like all the dance moves. Mm. First of all, half of, them, half of them aren't very good dancers. I would never say that to them. That's what They're I was going to ask. Is TikTok increasing the number of, of non-black kids with rhythm? Is there a direct relationship there? Because I don't know so, that tic- I might be for it, you know. I, mean, I don't know that TikTok. I don't know that TikTok is giving non-black kids rhythm. I think it's giving them a false sense of reality. That's oh, wow. my personal opinion on it. Um, okay. in, in a word, TikTok is jehulifying. Mm. It is. It it it's. And for those of you, well, none of you know this yet. Jehulifying is a word you will hear often. Uh, it was made up by our good friend, Brett Sullivan, uh, that I, I lived with when I lived in Lynchburg, Virginia, when I was coaching at the University of Lynchburg. And jehulifying is essentially a, an all-encompassing term for secondhand embarrassment. When you just are so embarrassed for somebody else's actions that you feel embarrassed. Um, <laughs> I, be, I believe uh, recently I heard uh, cringy is the way that mm. people explain it now, yes. right? So Directly before related. there was, yeah, before there was cringy, we say jehulifying. So to me, TikTok's jehulifying, um, but I'm, I'm extremely hypocritical because I love reels. I think it's great. But you it, know what it, I like about TikTok? I just want to throw this out there. When parents get involved or grandparents get involved with their kids' TikToks, that's where, that's where I'll watch. Like, I'm here for that. Mm, okay. But only for a couple seconds. But so I'm you think like... The, the family bonding aspect over social media maybe is Yeah, it's like get something. grandma on the gram, right? It's called yeah, right. the gram, right? Right. I mean, right. she should be it's on fair. it. It's fair. And, you know, LeBron is on it with his kids. And, you know, the celebrities are, you know, I think they make it a little yeah. more accessible when they join forces. All right. Hey, listen, Shawnee, Shawnee's here. Maybe we need to circle back on TikTok. I don't know. Probably not. To be honest, yeah. I, I'm, but at any rate, I don't know that TikToks or Reels, which essentially TikTok is real. So maybe I'm back on TikTok. People at home, let me know what I'm missing about TikTok. Tell me something because I, I, I want to be into it. I really do. But I don't know that TikToks or Reels or short videos really do justice to what I watched in that actual game. Mm. That game, some of the finer points, the way that the ball moved, and I don't mean like ball movement. I mean the pace of the ball, the zip mm. that was on the ball. Mm. How, uh, how really high level the IQ of some of these guys are at this level. 
the high school kids and they're put together. I mean, they train mm -hmm. differently than we did. I mean, that's just the fact. Kids today train differently than men of 10 years ago. And, and that's just how it is. But I don't know that I really noticed it as much. And I see it a ton in basketball. Kids train uh, just so differently than, than they did 10 years ago. I don't know that I noticed it with lacrosse until I watched that video the other day and saw 30 Division I scholarship kids on one field. 30 on one field. And they're in high school. It's different if you watch a D1 game. You know what you're getting yourself into, <laughs> right? And, and we're talking a high, high level uh, D1 caliber player. There was a kid that was not committed yet. And I, I, I did look it up. He ended up going. To, he's at Duke now. You know, this was a year or two ago, this video that I watched. Um, man, what, what you can see in a full film, it's amazing. The highlight video, right? We talk about how on Instagram, on Facebook, that's the highlights, right? Those are the highlights of your life. You know, I, I'm guilty of that. I show all the cutest pictures of my daughter, all the fun trips that we take when we were allowed to travel right i i do only i, I don't do throwbacks of dirty diapers right mm -hmm. i don't do yeah. i don't do any of the bad stuff the highlights are only going to show you the best stuff what you see in a full game i, I think it, it needs to come back i i, I want to see i mean this kid who uh, ended up committing to duke was not committed before that game if i i would imagine every division one coach in the country is watching that game whether on TV or, or in person, that kid made a huge impact in one half that I watched. If you just showed the highlights, it would look amazing, but it, it doesn't even show the whole picture. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is the level of talent and the training level of some of the, the kids out there today, boys and girls, is so impressive to me. And I am excited to see where this game can go. And I, I do think, and we've talked about this before, right? I do think there is a lot of room for a potential ceiling. And we'll get into that another time. I still think there are, uh, the training is great. The level is great. Um, we got to talk about why Long Island is so good all the time at some point. Uh, and, and they are. Let's call it, call it what it is. I still don't know if the best athletes at each age level are actually playing our game. I don't think mm -hmm. so. We've talked about it a lot. It's probably not something we're going to get into tonight, but I'll leave there's it on lots, a positive. There's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot, there's to, a unpack lot there. to unpack there, and that's going to be some other time. But I will say I am impressed with what I saw in that one video, and that was a snapshot of the highest level of high school lacrosse. It's there. I mean, what kids are training to be great college lacrosse players in high school now. And that's as somebody who came from a non-traditional area and moved back to a non-traditional area and I'm in another non-traditional area. I don't think kids from these non-traditional areas always understand how much of an advantage the kids on the East Coast in some parts of the East Coast, how much of an advantage they have. You know, it is, it's, it's generational, talk about generational wealth, right? Mm. Being able to watch the game and have, in this case, a father who played the game or a grandfather who played the game or a dad who can string your sticks or, um, you know, the just rich history of lacrosse, like it, you can't underestimate that. And to be able to drive down the street and watch a high level of college lacrosse, you definitely can't underestimate that because as much as I mm. embraced l watching the same three VHS tapes growing up, like these kids can go down the street and pull up to Stony Brook or pull up to Hofstra or pull up to Cuse and that's that is their point of reference for the game versus you know whatever high school or they don't even have to go to college games you go to high school games the level's so high i mean it might as well no be doubt. A, a college game no no question about that and i think in long island 
you're going to find a lot. You know, you could go to a handful of high school games in a weekend and find really high level and something to look at and say, yeah, I want to do that. Right. Um, and you have colleges in long Island that you can go watch. So you have mm-hmm. a lot there. Uh, I, I feel like in Westchester, that's still true too, uh, to a degree. Um, I think there's more parody in Westchester than there's been where I grew up. Uh, if you want to go watch a good lacrosse game on a weekend, you could at, yep. at a high school level, or you could go to, uh, you know, you could, you could go to a division one game at Fairfield, or you could go to a division one game at St. John's, you know, you could go to some of those places and watch high level lacrosse. So it, it is very interesting to see. It, it starts before that though. I think, and that's, I mean, we'll have to have a whole other podcast on that. This stuff starts, you know, it is, it's, it's every team's fourth and fifth grade coach or sixth grade Mm -hmm. coach or seventh and eighth grade coach modified. Like that is where these players are made. It's the level of expectation, not even the level of expectation, level of accountability that they're held to at Mm -hmm. that age, at that young age, because I see it all the time when I was in Texas you know, kids would come to, I was coaching individual skill sessions and they would come to our skill sessions with just these atrocious habits that they've developed because nobody that has taught or watched them was holding them accountable to playing the right way. And then we try to spend four months and correct it. And then they go back and they get the same example. That's a, that's a really good point. And I don't know that you do find that every single play, you know, and that's why I should say a lot of high schools ha- go through cycles where they're right. really good and then they're just okay. And then they're maybe not so good and then they're really good again. And part of that is maybe size of school possibly. But I think a bigger part of it is what's going on with that youth program. Like you said, mm-hmm. you know, it, one, do they have high school kids to look at and maybe teach them, right? Yep. Those Saturday, what, what, what's better for a young kid than a Saturday, Sunday clinic, right? With, their, with the high school people. Um, do they have that? Do they have model? But I think it, you're, you're 100% right. Are you being coached in fourth or fifth grade? Yeah. At, at, this, at this stage in the game, like, do, are you really being coached in your youth? Uh, or do you have to go to a club to really get coached? Some kids are better off not even playing on a team until they get to high school. Right? If you've got a dad that knows the game and you've got a program that doesn't know the game, why play for that team if you want to get better? Just go hang out with your dad in the backyard. That's all it takes. It's, it's possible. I think that's a little layered, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just go hang out with your dad. Don't have any friends. And, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean. Ne- never play in a game. What is that? You know. You play just, other sports. Uh, play, team, play-, play team sports. I thought about this. with. Oh, let me put this out there. I thought about this with my own kids who don't exist. Uh, uh, okay. What I, I think. Okay, here's what I would do. I would put my hypothetical son, first of all, in swimming and gymnastics. So they learn survival skills and body control. That mm-hmm. would be the first. You did gymnastics growing up on some level. I, I did. I did. I, I was uh, I was all right. Yeah. But that body control, I think, is an important part of all of this, right? Yeah. Balance, and, and, body control. And let me skip forward. Is that One of the hardest things about teaching young kids to play lacrosse now is that kids are going straight to lacrosse and they don't have mm. a background or foundation of athleticism. Yeah, so you're right. Start them in, you can start my kids in swimming, gymnastics, play some soccer, play some basketball, play some t-ball. It's fine. You want to play baseball for a couple of years? It's fine. All right, <laughs> we can do it. And you know, not start lacrosse. We'll play lacrosse in the backyard, but no teams, right? Until seventh or eighth grade. Until seventh got the or skill eighth set. grade. Yeah, skill set. They got to have the skill set. All right, so I want to hear. Into uh, so I want to hear from all of you, all of the listeners. Uh, what do you think about 
Francis's plan for his unborn children to not play an actual <laughs> lacrosse game till seventh and eighth grade and just submerge himself into um, daddy ball and uh, swimming and gymnastics. I think there's definitely pieces of that plan that are very sound. I think there is definitely some pieces that, of that plan that are literally for some of you listeners to tee off on this plan. Well, so if it please. doesn't work out, you just have more kids. Yeah, so, so, and then you try something else. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Please let us know what you think about Francis's plan for his <laughs> unborn children. You got a name for your unborn children? It's not nice. You shouldn't actually ask that, right? You don't ask, ask people what they're going to name their children. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Austin. I'm from Texas. For, not Austin. Why don't you name him Dallas. Uh, Because the Cowboys suck right now. Fair enough. And with that, we will go to a commercial break. (laughs) 